for number six here, I want to show you actually um, how to enter the intervals using the Alex program. So we're going to leave it here, but I'll do my scratch work over here. So the functions f and g are defined as follows. We have the two functions for each find the domain. So this is similar to what we did in number five, the, the question just before this, except um, now we're actually going to write our domain in interval notation. So for the first function, we have f of x. And uh, again, we don't really care whatever's up here is going to be just fine unless there's a, well, I guess we care if there was a, a radical, a square root, but there's not. There's just x minus 1. We can plug anything in for x and subtract it. The problem comes from the denominator uh, because it's potentially could be equal to 0. And if it's 0, we division by 0 is undefined. So we take the bottom and we set it equal to 0. And that will help us find any values where when we plug that a value for x, we end up with 0. Um, that's a plus. So again, one of the ways we go about solving this is we factor. So we have x times x is x squared. Two numbers that multiply to give us negative 2 are 1 and 2. Um, our middle, so that we're going to end up with this negative 2. That means we're going to end up 1 is negative, 1 is positive. We're going to end up subtracting, and we're going to get a positive 2. So that means the larger number has to be positive. So then you could check this by foiling it out. Uh, when you foil out to do the check, you get x times x, which is x squared. You get x times positive 2, so plus x, 2x. Then you get negative 1 times x, and then negative 1 times 2, which gives you negative 2. The middle term... So we get x squared, uh, negative 1 from 2 is uh, plus x minus 2. So it checks. We got back to where we started. And again, we use this property that um, if you have two numbers that multiply to 0, they can independently be 0. Because once you get one of them to 0, the whole product equals 0. Oops, no. x plus 2 equals 0. So again, we add 1 to both sides, and we get x equals positive 1. Or over here, we subtract 2 from both sides, x equals negative 2. So I always go with this, put them on a number line from smallest to largest. So negative 2 is over here to the right. There's 0 in here somewhere, so then positive 1 has to be here. Negative 2 and 1 are the two numbers we want to take out. Our domain is everything else. And we start out here at negative infinity, and over here goes to positive infinity. So when we write this interval notation, it's going to be negative infinity until negative 2. That's all in our domain. We're going to take the 2 out by putting a parenthesis. That means that's negative 2 is not included. When we deal with uh, uh, infinities, we never get there. You can never get to infinity because you, you think you're there, but you still have further to go, long ways to go. Uh, so that's why that's always a parenthesis. And then we union it. We go to the other side of negative 2. So notice this excludes negative 2, but it's got just to the left and the right. Those are included, but negative 2 itself is excluded. We're going from negative 2 to 1. Okay, so that's all included. We exclude positive 1 by this parentheses union parentheses 1. So this is it. 1 is here in the middle. This is to the left of 1. This is to the right of 1. And we go all the way to infinity. And again, a parentheses on infinity. There is our interval notation. Okay, I want to show you um, sort of how to enter that in. It's just be careful here. Uh, so we're going to use the one with both the parentheses. Um, and we'll put in negative infinity, 
to negative 2, not 5, 2. And then we're going to use our union over here. There it is. And we come back and get our parentheses here. We're going to go from negative 2 to positive 1. And then we're going to put that. And then we're going to do that. And we're going to go from 1 to positive infinity. So a lot to put in, but just uh, all the tools are right here. Now the domain of G um, is actually a very simple thing, but you'll, you'll see this plus and you might try to factor, but it, it won't factor. It's a sum of squares, which does not factor. Uh, notice 81 is positive, so that's always going to be positive. When Whatever number you put in for X, you're going to square it. That's going to make it positive. So the smallest this number could be is 0. 0 plus 81 is not 0, it's 81. Anything that you put in for X in the denominator will not give you 0, which means the domain is everything. It goes everything from negative infinity to positive infinity. So that's where when we come to this one. We just put this in as negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, had this been X squared minus 81, then you are right, that would factor into x plus 9, x minus 9, and then we would have a, a domain where we would have to take out negative 9 and positive 9. But in this case, this is the, I, you know, it seems like a tricky one, but it's, it's actually, you know, fairly straightforward. And it, it does happen. This is a, a sum of squares. There, there's no possibility this is ever going to be 0. Okay, so the domain is everything.